smarting from their humiliating loss to the commanders. The Eagles arrive in Indianapolis as roughly touchdown favorites, Kyle. While the Eagles remain straightforward, the Colts have become anything but with their coaching changes, their quarterback changes, their backfield changes. But that being said, it does seem they have finally settled on a formula and personnel grouping that they want. Matt Ryan handing the ball off to Jonathan Taylor, kind of getting back to keep away. Uh, is, is that a correct assessment of the situation? Yeah, in the, the first game under Saturday, which was the first game with Ryan back for a few weeks, that was absolutely it. They still did the thing where they only let Ryan throw short. He had a 5.9 A dot in that game, which lines up with how they were using him towards the end of you know his run of starts earlier in the season. The only difference was, as you pointed out, they were an established it team with a negative 7% pass rate over expected. And Ryan's two starts before benching, they were actually playing like a, a kind of a unique brand of football that we saw sort of with the Steelers late career Ben Rosberger, where they weren't running the football. Taylor also was, I think, a bit banged up in those games. Also, the running game just been terrible. So they were playing in the sort of up-tempo, short completions, pseudo it's almost a pseudo run game that you can establish when you're just peppering Paris Campbell with targets they actually did just run the football with Jonathan Taylor last week and it was one of Taylor's highest snap shares I know they may be getting Deion Jackson back but I wouldn't yeah I mean just we keep... need to be worried about that that is kind of bumming me out um I just, I just hope they keep Taylor up in that stratosphere because why would you not yeah I don't, maybe I don't it's think just should be worried yeah, maybe it's just the hope in me, but I, I do think that like there is a downgrade from Deion Jackson, who didn't practice Wednesday, got in a limited session, which is why we think he'll be back. But I'm going to call him a banged up Deion Jackson. That's a downgrade from Hines, I, I think is kind of a fair thing to say. So at that point, I, I still bet on us seeing a close approxim approximation of Taylor, who got like 94, I think, percent of snaps last week, which is just absurd for a guy who generally gives up some passing down work. If he's at 80% of the snaps, which would be yeah. a pretty significant decrease from last week, that's still elite. Like, yeah. and I think that's 80, where we'll see him. 75 to 80, I mean, we can work yeah. with that. 90, we're talking about, like, you can't keep him that's out. McCaffrey. Of that's yeah, that's yeah. McCaffrey. That's Like, peak McCaffrey with the Panthers level. Yeah, so until no peak McCaffrey spike weeks. Like, that's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, until McCaffrey, yeah, became a committee back. Which, well, yeah, until then, of course, yes. Uh, which we will be talking about a little later in the show. Yeah. Crane, Kyle just broke down the Colts. A running game what's going on with the pass catchers yeah I, I tend to think that you know Jeff Saturday came in and he was like you know what you're not doing using your best players enough because in addition to John Taylor playing like literally every snap we also saw Pittman run a route on 100% of dropbacks uh, he saw a first read target on 33% of his routes we have a new play caller here as well right so some guy yes yeah, so I believe Frazier Parks Frazier who, Parks which... Frazier Defector, def defector, uh, accurately called, had a headline that said, "The Colts' new play caller is some guy." Yeah. <laughs> he's a he's a local fantasy football manager. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. he has he has Michael Pittman on his team because uh, he's now seen uh, ten plus first read targets in a game. Uh, only nine other receivers have done that. Uh, only uh, a couple receivers have done that more than once. The receivers that have done this are guys like Justin Jefferson, Deontay Johnson, Devontae Adams, wow. DeAndre Hopkins, like Cooper Cup, CeeDee Lamb, like all the guys who, you know, are the number ones. Like this is number one wide receiver stuff mm -hmm. that he's getting. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of excited about Pittman. I wasn't a Pittman guy heading into the season. Don't have a ton of Pittman. But when you get treated like this, I think it's a pretty clear sign in a new coaching staff's first game. They're trying to get you the ball. Uh Paris Campbell, I think, is also interesting because they, he clearly has a connection with Matt Ryan. Targeted on 33% of his routes last week. Uh, I think that connection clearly alive and well with Ryan. Alec Pierce uh, only targeted on 11% of his routes. He ran around on just 63% of dropbacks last week. I would not be optimistic about him. I think we're seeing things kind of consolidate, condense. Uh, he could get cut out a little bit. Uh, you left out the uh, Paris Kimball has tutters or tutties, maybe, if you will, in three straight <laughs> Matt Ryan starts. Uh, so, yeah. He keeps uh, studying, man. He just keeps studying. Keep, keep on Look, I, I, I have to say, as, as skeptical and maybe mean-spirited as I was about Jeff Saturday <laughs> getting hired uh, for the head co uh, head coaching job for the Colts, uh, he went ahead and did the right thing, which is, you know, you bench the guy who probably yep. should not be starting games in the NFL and Sam Ellinger, and you put in Matt Ryan, who would have probably won the past two <laughs> games for you if you would have had him in there. You force feed Jonathan Taylor. You force feed Michael Pittman. It's a good plan, and I think it can work. It, it is insane how many teams have self sabotage with pointless committees. Yeah. 
this pointless, pointless, pointless committees um, that maybe make sense on paper, but almost always are more effective when the committee gets whittled down. Denny, what does no Dallas Goddard mean for the Eagles passing attack? He had been top three or four tight end, a lot of targets, a lot of big plays. Yeah. What does this mean? Yeah, I, I mean, he was taking like a ton. Uh, I don't want to say all, but a ton of the underneath stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. 5.1 average depth of target this season. Um, he had uh, a 21% uh, target share. Uh, you know, I, I they were gonna they're gonna miss his his role, and and I'm and I'm I'm desperate to know who's going to fill not not fill the role because no one's gonna do what Goddard has done. Goddard's been very efficient, by the way, among the league leaders and um what is it uh stick with me here yards after the catch over expected Ooh. per reception Are, is right. that is that real it's that's a per a reception <laughs> that's <laughs> an nfl next gen one i think they use the yeah, tracking yeah. data so that's that's a good one. in other words he was doing a lot with his opportunities so they're gonna miss him uh tyree jackson was activated uh oh. to the 53 player roster yeah you guys were you guys are asleep at the wheel no i'm kidding i i blurred Converted quarterback why. That's right. Right. Converted quarterback. He uh, week 18 uh, last year. Uh, I have the stats in the blurb, which I don't have in front of me, but he, he <laughs> ran a, a, about 80 percent of the, uh, the routes, uh, saw four targets, 22 yards, touchdown. You could do worse. I think if he takes over, if he's the main uh, route running, pass catching tight end in, in Goddard's place, I think you could do way worse than Tyree Jackson, uh, at least at least for this week. Uh, against the Colts. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, th this offense uh, will definitely miss Goddard. I'd say, I'd say I'd be a little concerned with any of the non Goddard options because Goddard was doing right. so much with what I think I think it's fair to call a little because he was leading all tight ends and yards after, as you pointed out, yards after the catch. He was almost unprecedented how efficient he was at creating yards after securing the ball. Does anyone on this team actually, at least any of the tight ends, have like that level level of athleticism, level of tackle breaking ability that he does? Because yeah. that was sort of the key to making his so so role in terms of having no air yards to back his targets. That was the key to making it uh, a good role was that he was really good. Uh, former. DC defender, I believe, Tyree Jackson. I'm not sure if he has that. Well, I would I would note that um, Dallas Goddard was seeing 27% of his targets on screens. So I think that's a lot of the reason why you're seeing so much yards after catch and the low mm -hmm. ADOT, 5.1 ADOT, 8.1 ADOT on non-screen routes, which is kind of more of a typical tight end ADOT. So I think um, his absence could end up helping like Quez Watkins who also gets used on a lot of screens. It could end up helping Devontae Smith, who gets used on screens at a much higher rate than A.J. Brown. So I think some of that volume is like available for non-tight ends because it's just designed screens. It doesn't have to go to a tight end. Why would you not give A.J. Brown screens, I wonder? It uh, is odd. They did, yeah, he, he doesn't have a high percentage at all. Yeah, I, I noticed that A.J. Brown is like not even top 12 in expected uh, wide receiver points. Uh, which which is which is very very curious as to curious. why why that is. I mean, he's way over his expected points because he's very good, but maybe give him the ball more would be nice. Would be I think Devonte Smith's going to get the ball more without Dallas Goddard. It's the easy dot to connect, and his screens may maybe will come on screens. Yeah, Devonte Smith. I agree. Yeah. Hey, it's Matthew Barry from NBC Sports and RotorWorld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.